So we just said last night on the show, we highlighted what is a remarkable and very sad story. More than a quarter century after the end of apartheid, South Africa once again becoming a place where an entire group of people is targeted for discrimination and violence on the basis of their skin color. We oppose that, obviously. It was wrong 25 years ago. It is wrong now. It is wrong wherever and whenever it happens. So we call the State Department to get their view of what is currently happening in South Africa because America's moral leadership still does matter. They told us they didn't care. Confiscating property without compensation is fine, they said, in effect, <clears throat> because South Africa was, quote, a strong democracy, whatever that means. Pretty shocking. We're not the only ones who found that answer hard to believe, by the way. The Washington Post insinuated today that we made that up. Unfortunately, we did not. The president saw our segment last night, and he tweeted this response to it, quote, I have asked Secretary of State Pompeo to closely study the South Africa land and farm seizures and expropriations and the large-scale killings of farmers. We should say that we did talk about the land seizures on the show last night. We did not address the killings that he referred to. We did mention the threat of violence. But in any case, today, the State Department elaborated on the president's tweet. Here's part of it. I should mention that the expropriation of land without compensation, our position is that that would risk sending South Africa down the wrong path. Uh, we continue to encourage a peaceful and transparent public debate about what we consider to be a very important issue, and the South Africans certainly do as well. So, I mean, that was kind of tepid, I guess. It's not going to solve the problem, but it's basically good news. Pushing back against racial discrimination is always worth doing. And yet, for some reason, a reason no one really explained, luminaries in the media disagreed. They were offended by that. In an Orwellian turn, various news outlets suggested it was somehow racist to oppose the racist policies of the South African government, even Nazi-like. Watch. He goes to race. And what better way than to give this neo-Nazi propaganda that white farmers are being killed in South Africa, when in fact that is not true, not based on them being white. So show that clip to anyone who knows South Africa, who lives there, and see how they respond. They'll laugh bitterly. It's ludicrous. It's, an, it's a lie. The president of the country, Cyril Ramaphosa, has pledged to change South Africa's constitution in order to legalize the seizure of property without compensation. That's currently being debated in the parliament in South Africa. Even now, the government is trying to confiscate two game farms after the owners refuse to sell at a fraction of the market price. Everyone in the country understands what these are. They're racial attacks. Okay, say defenders of the South African government in this country, but previous generations in South Africa under the apartheid government also seized land on racial grounds. And by the way, that is absolutely true. They did do that. And it's one of the reasons that so many decent people in this country and around the world opposed apartheid. Apartheid was awful and wrong. Things have changed, though. Now our elites endorse the idea of a racial spoil system. And that's the scariest part. It's far more ominous than whatever the corrupt and incompetent government of South Africa is doing. Our ruling class now believes in collective punishment. That is the opposite of justice. Nobody is alleging that individual farm owners in South Africa stole their land. Instead, the claim is that people who resemble them did, and that's enough. Our elites see no problem with that standard. That should worry you a lot. If you got mugged, how would you feel about imprisoning someone who just happened to look like the mugger? How about the mugger's children? Should they be punished too? If those sound like insane questions, that's because they are insane questions. In the West, we punish only the guilty. We do not punish their descendants or everyone with the same hair and eye color. For more than 200 years, pretty much everybody in America agreed on those terms. Now, the people who run our country aren't so sure. Increasingly, they think that generational guilt seems like a fine standard. But where does that end up? For a preview, let's go back to South Africa. Julius Malema is the leader of the country's third largest political party. He's one of South Africa's most famous figures. Here's what he said two years ago about murdering people on the basis of their skin color. Watch this. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm saying to you, we've not called for the killing of white people, at least for now. I can't yes. guarantee the future. Yeah, but I mean, You'd understand somebody watching that, especially as it gets shared on Twitter, they freak out. Ah, it sounds like a genocidal ah, call. Ah, cry babies. Malima hasn't become any more moderate. He's become more radical. And not coincidentally, he's become more popular. Here's Malima just a few months ago. When you want to hit them hard, go after a white man. They feel a terrible pain. We are starting with this whiteness. 
wa cutting the throat of whiteness e tsanga re gaola molala Malema, by the way, is not a fringe figure in South African politics. He's a pivotal figure in South African politics. He saw the president's tweet last night, and much like the Washington Post, Malema was offended by it. Notice how he makes certain to blame Jews for good measure. Watch this. This is from today. Donald Trump is not saying anything we have not heard from white people. There's a group of white right-wingers who are being trained by Jews in Pretoria to be snipers. Only death will stop us. Not Trump, not poverty, not sanctions. That right there is what our ruling class is now defending. It does make you wonder about their motives. Christian Witten is a former State Department senior advisor under Presidents Trump and George W. Bush, and he joins us tonight. Christian, great to see you. Good to see you. So there are many levels here. South Africa is the most modern, really the only really modern country in Africa. It's a great country. It's worth helping them not slide into Zimbabwe territory. But there's also a moral level. Why is it so hard for the State Department to say, no, that's wrong, we're not for that? Yeah, you have clientitis here, and this happens in what we call the regional bureaus at the State Department. You have an East Asia bureau, in this case an Africa bureau, and too often they end up representing the interests of the government, the foreign government to us, as opposed to their real job, which is to represent our interests to them. You saw that in the original statement out of the State Department, very weak defending South Africa and completely glossing over the murder happening there. Why would, I mean, look, anybody, one of our producers is married to a South African, South Africans working here, of, of all political backgrounds. But you talk to anybody who lives in the country, and the first thing they'll say is, well, why would you take statistics from the government at face value? That's insane. And yet our State Department does. Why aren't they more sophisticated? Or do they know that they're yeah. false? I don't think they know. I think there's a lot of ignorance about this issue. You know, this is one of the sort of unauthorized victim groups around the world. We have authorized ones that we're allowed to be concerned about, um, you know, the uh, various minority groups. But when it comes to the president or other people, the vice president defending Christians in the Middle East, even defending Muslims in Burma, defending Christians in Burma who are also beleaguered, 60 churches burned there, uh, defending Muslims in China, these are not the ordinary victim groups that the left cares about. And that flows over to our State Department bureaucracy at times. Times, unfortunately. And so you see just not a lot of regard and interest for this. We also don't have a political ambassador yet down in South Africa, which means that our representation down there, frankly, is weak. Yeah. And by the way, just to be totally clear, I, I, I'm very wary of getting in, too involved in the internal dealings of any, of any country unless it directly benefits the United States. So I'm not calling for any dramatic action, but people do listen to what our State Department says, and it seems like it would just be low cost to say you know, the United States doesn't think that you should punish people on the basis of their appearance. Also, we can just tell a very, very uh, topical historical lesson, if you will, and we can, without you know anything with the military, with intelligence, just be honest about this. What's going on in South Africa right now happened next door, nearby in Zimbabwe, right. uh, beginning around 2000. Robert Mugabe going after white farmers there. The same stuff where it's a combination of political intimidation and then violence by thugs. They push more and more white farmers out. That actually has led to food shortages in Zimbabwe. It became the poorest class. country on planet Earth for. A while because of that. So is the president, do you think, going to keep up with this issue or is it the criticism, do you think, going to slow him down? No, I think, that, you know, across the board, the president has been very good about some of the forgotten people, not only here in the United States, but people who around the world are beleaguered. I mentioned Christians in the Middle East, really no one aside from Trump um, speaking up for them, not even the Pope, not anyone like that. So I think you're going to see this. And, um, you know, Pompeo has been by necessity very focused, North Korea, Iran, Syria. Right. This is, as you point out, not an area where there are fundamental U.S. interest at stake, yeah, but, but it's, it's worth one that's saying been brought something. to his attention. We're, yeah. we're actually doing a segment later in the show with Marco Rubio on Muslims being persecuted in China, because it's not, and I know the reaction is, oh, this is tribalism. It's not, actually. There's a principle here that's worth defending, and we're going to continue to, and I hope the president will. Christian Witten, thank you very much. Thanks, Decker. Great to see you.